Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. I am Lorston Johnson, the Assistant General Superintendent of Discipleship, and I will be your teacher for this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to study your word together. We thank you for those that have contributed to the, uh, the showing of this lesson so that others can see and learn about you. I pray that as I study this lesson this morning, Lord, that I will rightly divide the word of truth. I pray that as I decrease, you increase. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. We are still studying from the summer quarter. The theme for the summer quarter has been Confident Hope. The title of our lesson this morning is Be Confident. We're studying from Unit 3, Faith Gives Us Hope. Our background scriptures are coming from 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, the 16th verse, through the 5th chapter and the 10th verse. Our print passage is coming from 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, verses 16 through 18, and the 5th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Our key verse is from 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, and the 1st verse. And I will be reading all verses from the King James Version. The key verse. For we know that if our earthly house or this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Let's take a look at our lesson aims for this morning. As a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Acknowledge the hope that Paul, when faced with death, manifested in God's eternal promise. Experience awe in the faith of family and friends who are facing their mortality. Develop a growing trust in God's promise of eternal life through faith. Our focus in this lesson this morning is death and the hope for eternal life. As indicated, the lesson is coming from 2 Corinthians, so I'm going to give you a brief overview of that book to help put our lesson into context. Paul wrote two epistles to the church in Current. In the first epistle, he counseled and gave instructions to a young church not long after its inception. In this book, Paul was a teacher. When he wrote the second epistle, there was a sentiment of distrust spreading in the church regarding Paul's sincerity and his apostolic authority. Paul wrote 2 Corinthians to answer his critics. And in this epistle, Paul was a pastor. 2 Corinthians is highly personal and one of the most biographical books among the letters written by Paul during his time. We have three outlines this morning. Let's start with the first outline. Okay, let's take a look at outline one in our lesson today. There are three outlines. We're going to do the first one, and it's entitled Focus. It's coming from 2 Corinthians the fourth chapter, the 16th through the 18th verse. I will read the scriptures. Paul wrote, For this cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In review of this passage scripture, we have to reflect on the reason that Paul wrote this letter. There were false teachers in the church, and they were trying to draw the members of the church away from the gospel. One way they were doing this is by undermining Paul's sincerity and his authority as an apostle. Much was at stake and Paul knew it. In this epistle, Paul discussed his personal sacrifices for the sake of the gospel. Much had been sacrificed to bring the ministry of salvation to the Corinthians and Paul needed them to know that. In this passage, Paul is speaking of his determination to, to teach the gospel no matter what is going on, no matter what he's facing, no matter the hardship that come his way. 
And he was speaking also on behalf of his fellow laborers who was working along besides him. Paul said, even though this out man perished, the inward man is renewed every day. This inner man, according to Ephesians 3.16, is renewed by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that lives in us. And not only does he renew us, he also gives us hope. Paul spoke of light afflictions, and he indicated that they were just for a moment, they were temporary. But Paul is not dismissing our daily troubles when he says this. He's not saying that our daily troubles are small or insignificant or of no consequence. Paul is simply making a comparison. He's saying that our suffering now are momentary troubles, but will achieve for us an eternal glory that far outweighs anything that we're experiencing right now. In Romans 8.18, Paul said, the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which God shall reveal in us. Paul told them to stay focused. Look like at the things which are seen because they are temporary. But look at the things that are not seen because these things are spiritual and they are eternal. Paul told Timothy to look to Jesus the author and the finisher of his faith. While writing Corinthians 2, Paul was contemplating his own death. Paul, Conrad, and him faced daily threats of death, beatings, and in imprisonment. Nothing sheds more light on our thoughts and actions than the prospect of our own death. But Paul was not deterred by this prospect of his death. If anything, it made him even more determined to continue his mission of preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. In verse 15, which is not in our lesson today, but located just above verse 16, it says, all of these things are for your sake. And Paul says it this way in Romans 8 and 28, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and those that are called according to his purpose, to his purpose. When living during difficult times, like the times we're living through today with this pandemic, the death of loved ones, and all of the issues in our economy, when living with times like these, our confidence and security and peace of mind can easily be shattered by fear and by trouble. But God has given us an eternal hope of glory through Jesus Christ. We need to stay focused on him. And through Christ's redemptive work on the cross and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we can remain confident, hopeful, and steadfast in every season of our life, despite what is going on in the world. Now let's take a look at outline two. It's entitled Forecast. It's coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. I will read the scriptures. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, we that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up. Now he has wrought us for the selfsame thing in God, who also has given unto us the earnest of spirit. Some versions of the Bible refers to this passage of scripture as awaiting a new body. In verse one, Paul uses a metaphor he draws on biblical image of the tabernacle to help it explain his point in this particular passage. The tabernacle was a portable tent. It was used as a worship center when the Israelites were homeless and wandering in the desert. They used this as a temporary place to go and worship. They could fold up this tent and take it anywhere that they moved. The tabernacle eventually gave away to the temple, a fixed structure, something more permanent, made of more durable material. 
and it was built in the promised land, their homeland. Hebrew 11.13 says that we are strangers here. We are sojourners. This is our temporary home. And Paul says in this, in this body, we groan. We groan because we're burdened by life. What Paul longed for was a new body. He did not fear being unclothed because he knew that once his spirit left this body, it would be clothed by a house that was made by God. He says that we are guaranteed that what death swallows up this mortal body with all of its limitations and its frailties, God has a new house for us. One not built with human hands, one built eternally and in heaven. Paul tells us, Philippians 3 and 21, that God is going to change our vile bodies and fashion for us a new body like his glorious body. And God has already prepared us for this transformation. He has molded us, shaped us, and made it possible for us to understand how this transition would make place. He did so by giving us the artist of spirit. The word honest means showing sincere and intense conviction. I'm familiar with this word from the real estate market. Whenever you wish to buy a house, you put a contract on the house, and then you make an earnest deposit. That deposit tells the seller of the house that you are serious about your commitment to purchase the house. Jesus makes an earnest deposit in every believer. He deposits his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit seals us until the day of redemption, guaranteeing what is to come. It is proof of the authenticity of our faith, and it serves as evidence that we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit assures us that the forecast for eternal life is bright for every believer who walks by faith in Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at our last outline. It's entitled Future Faith or Future Destiny. I will read the scriptures. They are coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone must receive the things done in his body, according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Paul said we are confident. We are fully assured in the God that we serve. We have no uncertainty in his promise of eternal life. He said we walk by faith. We have complete trust and confidence in him. And this life, our life, must be a walk of faith. In Hebrew 11 and 6, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Paul says that it would, he would rather be absent from this old body and present with the Lord. This shows Paul fully surrendering to the will of the Lord. He said, wherefore we labor, so that whether we be present in this mortal body or present with the Lord, our goal always is to please the Lord. We definitely cannot be idle in our mortal bodies. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Paul advises the Corinthians to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He reassured them that their labor would not be in vain. Yes, God does give us grace, but he still holds us accountable to live before him in faithful obedience. Paul said in verse 10 that there will be a day of reckoning. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the things that we do in this body. Now let's take a look at our concluding reflections for this morning. As Christians, we don't serve God by blind faith. Our faith is based on evidence. It is grounded in our knowledge and our experience of God, with God. 
In outline two, we discuss forecasts. A forecast is a prediction or estimate of future events. When I think of forecast, I think of a weather forecast or a financial forecast. Any forecast depends on reliable historical data. And as a believer, our faith is based on the historical fact that God's track record is 100% reliability. It is our faith that keeps us from fainting in times of trouble. It is our faith that set us above the fear of death. In Luke 18 and 1, Jesus told his disciples that men should always pray and not faint. The suffering of this present time is just not worthy to be compared to the glory that God will reveal in us. Rather than succumbing to despair, Paul challenges us to walk by faith. And we must endure life crises as they come and know that God is in control at all times. In Philippians 3.20, in the King James Version, it says that our conversation is in heaven. Now, most other versions of the Bible says our citizenship is in heaven, and I totally agree with that statement. But I like the idea that my conversation is in heaven. And I can picture this, that as I am having all of these conversations around me, I am at the same time having a conversation with the Lord in heaven. He is strengthening me and enabling me to deal with these crises as they arise in my life. The writer of Hebrews says in the Hebrew 11:16 that those in the faith hall of fame were longing for a better country, a place where God is not ashamed to be called their God. Paul encouraged the church in Corinth to stand firm in the Lord. The same message is fitting for us today. These are the words of the Lord that are written in Isaiah 44, 22. He says, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. These are definitely the words of a loving God. He has cleared the way for a better future. In Romans 8 and 23, Paul wrote, We who have the first fruit of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons and, yes, as daughters and for the redemption of our bodies. What an awesome message in this trying times. It is a timely message. And I am so glad that we had the opportunity to study it together. Let us close with a word of prayer. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for this opportunity to study your holy word. Lord, we are asking you to make us conscious and aware of your teaching and that we carry them in our hearts so that we can live holy in your sight. Help us, Lord, to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work and help keep us faithful through times of trials and tribulations. Lord, we are dealing with a pandemic right now. We're dealing with le the, the death of loved ones. And we're dealing with an economic market where prices are rising. There are so many people that are struggling to stay in their home. But Lord, we know you're able. We know that in inside in of all of these trials and tribulations that you are still in control. Help us to stay faithful and walk upright in your sight, Lord. Help us not to lose heart, not to give up, not to quit, not to turn back. Because, Lord, we've come too far to turn back now. And, Lord, this is my testimony. That this is not about me. That this is all about you. I want to stay focused on you so that I can see you. So one glad morning, when this life is over, I can look upon your face, Lord. Thank you so much for grace. Thank you for your son, Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for all that he's done for us. Thank you for the redemptive work on, on the cross. We know that one day, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. It is in his holy name that I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you have a blessed week. And I will see you next Sunday in Sunday School. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's not about me, but it's all about him. I'm living to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. It's not about me. But it's all about him. I'm living to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. It's not about me. Not about me. It's all about him. All about him. Lord, I want to see him someday, someday, I really want to see him someday, it's not about my All the things I've done I'm living to see Jesus I want to see Jesus It's not about my name All the things I've done Oh, oh. I'm living to see Jesus Lord, I really want to see Jesus. It's not about.